Well, let me see. And why are you talking about relative pronouns in unit six? Is it six or seven? Six. Six. <laughs> All right. Um, this video is about how relative pronouns work in English and comparing that to how they work in Greek. Um, and we're, we're just selecting one of the relative pronouns in English. That's the relative pronoun who, which has two other forms, whose and whom. Um, just to be fair, there are other relative pronouns in English, mm -hmm. right? Like which and that, right? So we're talking about things like the book which I wrote is silly or the person that I like is beautiful, right? Stuff like that. So that's a relative clause. It's introduced by a word like who, which, or that. And there's a sentence after it, okay? Those sentences have subjects, objects, and verbs, just like a regular sentence. But because it's the relative pronoun can't stand by itself, you can't have a sentence that I like. It has to be part of a bigger sentence, the, the person that I like, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So they're dependent clauses, not independent ones. Um, and uh, we're just going to look at the ones with who, who's, and whom, because they're very interesting from the point of view of understanding the way relative pronouns work in Greek and in English. So um, in English, we have this relative pronoun who, who's, and whom, which has three different forms. And the way you use it is you choose which one of those three forms it has, depending on its grammatical function within the relative clause, OK? So our example sentence is, the chef who baked this cake messed it up, OK? In, in that sentence, who is the subject of the verb baked, OK? Um, it refers to the chef, OK, who happens to be the subject of the sentence. But if you could you, you did it otherwise, you could say, the, the cake, or, well, let's see, I, I dislike the chef who baked this cake. The who would stay the same, right? It has nothing to do with the case of the chef, mm -hmm. right? It's all about what you want to say in the relative clause. So because who is the subject there, use the form who. Let's go to the next page, OK? We got two other versions of this sentence. Um, so here's number two. The chef whose cake I ate messed it up. Now whose is spelled in a funny way, but it's really who apostrophe s. It's the genitive of who, right? Um, so we have r remains of the inflectional system in Indo-European in the relative pronouns in English. So that's why we want to look at them. But there, that's a genitive. And it's a genitive modifying cake, right? It, it's a possessive genitive with the word cake. So it, it's what you want to say in that clause, whose cake I ate, that determines the form of who, right? Not the chef, right? That it refers to. And the last example is whom, which is the accusative case of who. So the chef whom I disrespected, in that case, um, messed up this cake on purpose, the whom is the object of the verb disrespected, right? So you can see you can do any of the three things that um, that these three case endings want, and it's all happening inside the relative clause. That's the determiner of the case of the pronoun, okay? Who, whose, or whom. All right, so now let's move on to the way it works in ancient Greek. Um, in ancient Greek, relative pronouns have and in English, they have antecedents, okay? So we need to introduce this concept of what an antecedent is. So we defined it for you. It's for antecedents or nouns from elsewhere in the sentence or in the context sometimes that they refer to. So in our example, the chef who baked this cake messed it up. The who points back at the chef, right? Usually the antecedent comes before. That's what ante means, okay? So the antecedent of who is the chef. If we look at, um, at the way Greek um, uh, relative pronouns work, we can see that there's, a, there's something important that happens. Because ancient Greek, ha the relative pronouns, like other words in ancient Greek, have both gender and number as well as case. In English, we only have case, who, who's, and whom. Um, and it doesn't, uh, there, in, and who, who's, and whom, we can't tell whether it's singular or plural. It works for both. Right, the 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 books, the the people whom I liked, 
or the men who ate the fish, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are plural forms we don't distinguish in the relative pronouns. And we don't have any grammatical gender in English anymore, okay? Um, but So in English, the case of a relative pronoun is determined only by its grammatical function in the relative clause. But its gender, uh, in the case of Greek, okay, and number are determined by the gender and number of the relative clauses, of relative pronouns antecedent. Okay, English doesn't have gender and number, Greek does, and they're used to make it possible to specify and to remove ambiguities about who the antecedent is of a relative pronoun. There are cases in English sentences where you can't tell, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, this is the basic idea um, that we want to get across to you about how Greek relative pronouns work. That's the fundamental rule. The case of the relative pronoun is like English, it's determined by its function within the clause. But the gender and the number are determined by the gender and the number of the antecedent. Alright, we're going to have another video on the forms of the relative pronoun. That's it.